Welcome to another episode of What's Inside from RC Model Review. Today I'm going to show you what's inside an electronic speed controller. That's right, an ESC, those devices that we use to power our brushless electric motors. And I've got an assortment of ESCs here. As you can see, they come in all sizes and flavors and shapes and colors, um, but they share a lot in common. So let's take a look at, for example, let's start with this one. This is a fairly common type of ESC. This is a Hobby King one and it'll handle up to 30 amps and it has a UBEC in it. So let me explain some of these terms first of all. This ESC uh, takes voltage from your battery here, which is uh, in this case, and we can tell by looking at the label, it can be anywhere up to four cells. So a 4S battery can be for a 1, 2, 3, or well, probably a 2, 3, or 4S battery. So it takes the, the DC voltage from there and it turns it into an AC voltage, a multi-phase AC voltage here, which goes out to your motor because two wires in, three wires out. The brushless electric motors we run are actually AC motors, so you can't just hook them across a battery, they won't turn, they'll just move a little bit and then they'll stop. So we need to uh, convert DC to AC, which is what an ESC does, and it also has another wire here, this one, this goes off to your receiver. It's because not only does this convert DC to AC, but it also gives you control of the speed of the motor, the amount of power it's putting out, and to do that it needs a signal from the receiver, from the throttle channel. Now because this one has a UBEC, uh, this lead serves a dual purpose. Not only does this take the signal from the receiver and send it off to the control circuitry inside the ESC, it also provides the power to run the receiver and the servos that are connected to it. The UBEC is a voltage regulator. A BEC stands for Battery Eliminator Circuit. And there are two types of those, and we'll get onto that in a minute. But there we go, that's basically what you get inside the heat shrink. There you can see there's lots of components soldered to a circuit board, and there's usually a little heat sink up here. And as I've shown on previous videos, if you want to get the maximum reliability, you want to cut away the heat shrink and expose some of the metal under there. Not too much so it falls off, but just enough to expose a little window, and that enables the heat to escape far more effectively, because this plastic heat shrink is an insulator, and it stops the heat getting out. Now, let's look at a somewhat bigger one. On this one, you can see the heat, heat, uh, heat sink out the back there. It's got fins, because this is actually a much, more, a much larger ESC. It's a 70 amp ESC, and it'll handle up to six cells. So, a lot more power through this baby, which is why these wires are a whole lot thicker. But still, two wires off to your battery pack, one wire off to your receiver, and three wires off to your motor for the multi-phase AC output. Now, this one here, if you look, has no BEC. In fact, I think it says no BEC. See that? doesn't have a battery eliminator, no regulator here. So you'll have to power your receiver somewhere else because this lead here doesn't provide any voltage to your receiver or your servos. It simply carries the throttle control signal to this ESC so you can control the speed of your motor. But fundamentally, everything else is the same. It's got some components soldered on the board here and that piece of metal has fins. And see, they've already cut away the heat shrink to expose the metal to get a better heat transfer with the air that's flying over it. That's the big ESC. Now, let's have a look at what's inside one of these little babies. Here's one I mutilated earlier, just for your benefit. So here's the side with all the components on it. You can see we've got lots of components there. The little chip with a pink dot on it, that is a microcontroller. It's a little computer chip, and that does all the hard work. That's the, the brains of the device. Over here, this little thing here, this is part of the BEC. And this, one, this particular ESC has what's called an SBEC, which is a switching BEC. And that's generally a far more efficient way. And with most of the ESCs that have capacity to handle more than four cells will have an SBEC. Otherwise, they'd get too hot, reducing the massive or the higher voltage of the LiPos down to the five to six volts the receiver needs that overheat. So this, the bigger cell count ESCs usually have an SBEC, if they have a BEC at all. Now, on this side here, we've got some big grunty capacitors. And why do we have those? Because when we convert the DC into AC out, it creates a lot of pulses on the DC side of things. These capacitors here smooth out those pulses, so we don't get a lot of noise going back to the battery, and it actually makes life easier on the battery. Also stops the noise from the from the switching affecting our little microcomputer chip in here as well. So these capacitors are what they call low ESR, which means that they handle pulses very well. They're designed to handle huge pulses and smooth them out as capacitors do. Now on this side, lots of little devices here. See those little things? They are called FETs. And a FET really is just an electronic switch. It's simply, all they do is they switch the voltage. In this case, they switch repeatedly across these three wires so as to produce an AC signal that causes the motor to turn. And that basically is how a brushless motor is driven. It has a constantly changing um, multi-phase output here. 
and these things do all the switching between the DC and the AC and this, how they're switched is controlled by the bits on this side, this little microcontroller chip here determines exactly when to turn on each of these little chips and when to redirect the power out each wire. So it's quite complex in a way but also it's reasonably simple in another way but I mean that's really it, there's not a lot else in there. Um, what often happens is these little FETs fail, they have to conduct a lot of power, a lot of current and sometimes they'll just get too hot and fail. One of the modes for failure is if the heat sink that goes on here doesn't properly contact all these FETs, any that aren't properly contacted will get hot and they will fail. So if it's not physically well constructed with enough heat sinking then it will fail. This one's failed but um, I've cut the wires off, um, one of these FETs went a bit wonky and uh, it doesn't work anymore. But you could repair it, if you had the right FETs you could unsolder the FETs, put new ones on but at the price these things cost it's not really worth the effort, you just buy a new one and then you know it's going to work. So that is, there are also lots of other features to, to ESCs, the little, because they've got a controller chip and little computer chip there, they can be slow start, fast start, you know, soft start, you can change whether they actually break the motor, whether they put a load on the motor to stop it turning when you cut the throttle off, um, when um, they actually start slowing the motor down as your battery gets flat, all sorts of clever intelligent functions come out of this little chip in here. Some people are now actually reflashing this chip so they can make their motors go backwards which is quite clever. So because it's a computer chip, it can be reprogrammed if you really feel like it and you've got the skills and knowledge. There we go. That's what's inside an ESC. If you've got any questions, put them on the bottom of this video and I'll do my best to answer them. And I'll be doing a full series on electric that will be covering batteries, ESCs, motors and how to, how to choose the right ones, how to set them up and so forth. But I thought first of all you might like to see what was inside. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. More What's Inside videos coming from RC Model Reviews really soon.